Greetings ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mangs, and today I welcome you guys to yet another Fire Emblem Fates character. Oh no, wait, never mind, we're actually doing a Radiant Dawn character today. This spotlight goes out to my lovely designer Mina Tangerina, as she badly wanted me to do a spotlight on her favorite character, the stalwart soldier Aaron. Aaron was born in Dane, and grew up with his childhood friend Laura. He was sadly orphaned at a very young age, and would have ended up on the streets were it not for a family of merchants from Begnion taking him in. Being raised in the Begnion capital, he eventually joined the military to express his gratitude towards the nation that raised him. After King Ashnod of Dane was defeated by the Crimean army under General Ike, Dane was handed over to the Begnion army, and thus Aaron was stationed as a prison guard at Glaive Prison. He would then come into contact with his childhood friend Laura, who had been taken prisoner by the Begnion army for helping the Dawn Brigade. Aaron agreed to help her out by turning a blind eye, allowing her to escape, but was later convinced by Laura to join the Dawn Brigade under Micaiah. Aaron is a young man seemingly in his early 20s. He is of average build and size, and has short, ruffled neon green hair. He dresses in a traditional dark green soldier's armor, and he has a bit of a laid-back demeanor and a lax attitude to him. Due to Radiant Dawn's lack of support conversations, and the fact that Aaron has very few lines of dialogue in the game itself, there isn't a whole lot of things to be said about his personality. He apparently has a lot of empathy for those close to him, being willing to sacrifice his position and even life to join the Dawn Brigade in their fight against the oppression of Begnion, the country he grew up in. He doesn't seem to have the best self-esteem either, stating in his death quote that he is no hero, just a soldier. Aaron also seems to have a rather soft spot for Laura, and might even harbor feelings for her. It's a little bit difficult to tell though, since Radiant Dawn doesn't really have any support conversations, and the two of them does not get a paired ending. Aaron also shows a lot of disdain for cowards, as can be seen in his battle conversation with Numida, which is a dire contrast to his rather kind demeanor towards everyone else. For the most part, Aaron appears to be a pretty normal guy, just trying to do the right thing. He isn't particularly charismatic, outgoing or special, but that doesn't stop him from fighting for what he believes in. As a unit, Aaron is the first soldier to join your team in Radiant Dawn. He shows up in Part 1 in Chapter 3 as an enemy unit, and you need to talk to him with Laura in order to recruit him. Since we're talking about Radiant Dawn, with its massive 42 chapters and a shit ton of units, we have to cover Aaron's availability. Now, while he joins early on, his availability, much like the rest of the Dawn Brigade, is a little shaky. In total, he's available in 22 out of the 42 chapters, meaning he can be used for slightly over half of the game. The big issue is that he is completely unavailable in Part 2, and being only available in 3 chapters of Part 3, until he later becomes steadily available in Chapter 4 and 5. This means that if you do not invest properly into Aaron while you can, he might join extremely underleveled later on, to the point where you will find it almost impossible to feed him kills. There is a way to remedy this issue, however, which we will get into later, but for now, know that if you plan on using Aaron in the endgame, you do well to feed him as many kills as possible in Part 1. He will need every bit of experience he can get. Stat-wise, Aaron is best described as an armor knight trapped in the body of a soldier. He has some of the best strength, skill, and defense growths in the entire game, and will cap these stats very reliably. He does, on the other hand, have extremely low speed, luck, and resistance, and will struggle to level these stats up on his own. Aaron's speed in particular is a big issue, as speed is easily one of the most important stats in the game. Due to his low base and growths in the stats, Aaron simply won't be able to double anything but the slowest of enemies, and on hard mode, you might just have to resign yourself to the fact that he won't be able to double anything at all. Due to this, the few speedwings you get over the course of the game are best spent on other units that can actually get into doubling territory. You might want to consider giving him a pair if he's walking on the edge of being double attacked by really strong units such as Lagu's Tigers, as that ensures he will be completely unplayable in certain parts of the game, but otherwise you should not bother. There is a way to make Aaron a lot less terrible, and that is via bonus experience. Levels gained from bonus experience don't work like normal level ups, as they give 3 stats of fixed level ups based on a character's highest growth rates, excluding capped stats. You can therefore level Aaron up until he caps his strength, skill, and possibly even defense, which will happen pretty reliably, and then give him level ups using bonus experience, which will pretty much ensure he always gets at least one point in speed. Using bonus experience this way, you can at the very least ensure that he won't get utterly speed screwed. 
crappy speed aside, Aaron is a physical tank, and tanks are quite useful in Radiant Dawn as there are many defense chapters and maps with choke points and narrow corridors, so having a unit capable of tanking and dishing out physical punishment is absolutely necessary. Though an argument can be made that if you want a real tank, you would do better going with a general like Gatry or Terraneo. Compared to the two other halberdiers in the game, Nephany and Danved, Aaron obviously has the benefits of an earlier join time, as well as being the strongest and most physically enduring of the three. Nephany focuses more on speed and resistance, and has slightly better availability by being available in 24 chapters compared to Aaron's 22, while Danved focuses more on hit points, magic and luck, but in return has much poorer availability, with only being available in 17 chapters. Aaron has the Thunder Affinity, which is mainly defensive in nature, as it provides his allies with defense and evasion. Pairing Aaron up with another tank that can in return boost his own survivability is usually considered a good choice. Characters with the Earth Affinity, such as Ike, Nolan, Oscar, Volug, or Seahark, can give Aaron a much needed 22% boost to his evasion at A rank, which can really help out his survivability a ton. In regards to skills, Aaron obviously gets the mastery skill Impale when he promotes to a Sentinel. Impale is best described as a really strong critical strike, as it deals 4 times the damage opposed to a crit's 3, but sadly it has a pitifully low activation chance of only half his skill. Impale certainly isn't bad, but compared to most of the other mastery skills that outright kill anything they activate against, it sure seems a little on the weak side. Now that's not to say Impale won't usually kill most things it procs against, but compared to say Luna, which deals triple damage and completely negates defense, it just seems very weak. Since skills can be freely swapped around in Radiant Dawn, many might think giving Aaron a skill like Adept might be good to help him double, but in reality this skill will do very little for him as it activates off his speed, which is not that great. Adept will also do nothing to prevent Aaron from being doubled himself, which is what he really needs help with the most. Now if Adept worked like it did in Path of Radiance, where it did proc off skill, it would be great for him, but sadly that is not the case. There are some other skills that can occasionally serve Aaron quite well, such as Beast Foe in the chapters where you face off against a lot of Beast Lagoos. Since Aaron has good strength, he can wield powerful weapons such as Great Lances, and with these he can reliably one-shot the less durable Lagoos, such as the Cats, and heavily injure the more tanky ones, such as the Tigers. Counter could also be a valuable skill for Aaron to pick up, since it procs of skill, something he has a lot of, and since Aaron is a frontline tank, he can use the skill to occasionally dish out some extra damage to his attackers. Disarm is also not a bad choice, as it also procs of skill and can negate enemy counterattacks, further improving Aaron's endurance, though its activation rate is a lot lower at only half his skill. Daunt is also a skill you could consider giving him, as Aaron will be mainly on the front lines where most of the scary enemies are found. Since his luck is rather poor, reducing the enemy's critical chance might also help out his own survivability quite a bit, in addition to helping out any other characters in Aaron's vicinity. Lastly, Wrath is a skill that gets progressively better the more tanky a unit is, as well as being useful on someone with high strength and good base damage, as a crit from Aaron will usually result in a kill. This in combination with Aaron's high skill means he will reliably land criticals when his health is below 30%, and that can really make him a lot more viable as a unit. So if you're the type that likes playing a bit risky, equipping this skill on Aaron will benefit you a lot. One of Aaron's biggest issues is probably the steep competition he faces in Radiant Dawn's Endgame, where the player is given a score of insanely viable and powerful units such as the Royal Lagoos and some other really strong pre-promotes. All of these characters can easily match Aaron's damage output, while often being tankier and capable of landing double attacks, so unless your Aaron is RNG blessed to all hell, taking him to the tower over, say, a Lagoos Royal will simply be a hindrance. Granted, once you obtain the Wishblade, Aaron might get a few short moments to bask in the sun, particularly if you bless it later on. Just be sure you grind his weapon rank up to SS so he can actually use it once it is obtained. At the end of the day, Aaron is a completely viable unit to use for normal mode playthroughs, but if you plan on using him on hard mode, he will require proper planning and a good amount of bonus experience to work. He sadly struggles to stand out in any meaningful way, usually being overshadowed by the much more popular Nephany, but he does provide some nice bulk and some good reliable damage output. As long as you can keep him from being doubled, he should serve you quite well.
Thank you for watching this character spotlight. If you enjoyed it, please consider supporting the video with a like and a comment. It really helps out the channel a lot. If you want to be notified whenever I release new videos, you can subscribe to my channel. And if there is a character you'd like me to cover in a future episode, please let me know about it in the comment section below. Just be sure to check out my playlist as I may have already covered your favorite character. Below you can also see some of the previous spotlights I've done by clicking on them. Most of the art and wallpapers you see used during this spotlight is made by my amazing designer Mina Tangerina. You can visit her page by clicking the link in the video description below. She also has a new stream now where she draws stuff, so be sure to check out that as well. Also check out the channels of my two script readers, Nasiro and Max HP, as they help me out with the script of the spotlights. At any rate, my name is Ben Manx, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.